What does a dare triple espresso know how to sugar a old bottle, a roll of duct tape, and a pool noodle have in common with gold prospecting? <laughs> As a gold prospector, the number one problem I have with all sluice boxes is that there is never anywhere to set them up properly. Because to get one of these to sit exactly where you need it, you need land, or you need long enough legs to set it up in the creek. Now I'm telling you right now, that just doesn't ever happen. Today's amazing plan is, well, not very amazing. I just got to connect these in a circle. But that's proving more difficult than I thought. I need a scrap bit of crap to jam this together. I got to do a tip run because there's a bunch of bullshit out here. But there should be a bit of scrap. That might work. That's not really scrap, but that'll definitely work. What kind of incorrect saw will I use today? Nice. Oh, that fits. That fits bloody perfect. Oh, mummy. Yeah. Now for duct tape. If you can't fix it with duct tape and cable ties, it's probably broken. This is spud engineering at its finest. I'm not 100% sure that I need this, but I figure it can't hurt. If you haven't worked it out by now, I'm building a floating high banker because if it's floating, I can put it wherever I want it. And that means I can have some processing power in the middle of the creek where it's deep. You can see where I'm going with this. This is going to be my pontoon. I'm gonna build a platform to sit that small high banker on it. Hoylet roll pyramid. And I was gonna use my little battery box over there and it would work just perfectly. Look at all the fern juice on the window. Ew. But for reasons I don't understand, it keeps telling me that the battery temperature is too hot, even though it's only 20 degrees in here. And it's happening to both of them. So if there's any electrical boffins out there that can just tell me if my batteries are rooted or not, I would love to know because this is a much better setup and these just aren't charging. Once I got it together and mocked up, I realized that the battery side, because it is a lead acid battery, is gonna be considerably heavier compared to the sluice box side. So I balanced that out. Look at that. Five minutes later. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. I have spent the better part of all morning creating this monstrosity and I don't need it. And that's because I have this. This is my cleanup tub, but it's also a boat. I still utilize some dare bottles because I need the coarse tailings to come off the back and I need the fine tailings to go off the front and the sluice block is too short to do it this way and too wide to do it this way with the feet kit. So, dare bottles. I mean, the floats? And it's gonna be unstable as hell, but I've accomplished all of this with just 12 years of public education. It's at this point I'm like, am I doing the right thing here? I don't know anything about boats, and this looks like a really ugly looking boat. And amazingly, I got the battery working. Apparently, this one, this one will hold a little bit of charge. We got two, we got two greens. It's almost 40 degrees centigrade today, and therefore, <laughs> I've got the smog on. Hopefully, I'll get maybe half an hour to 40 minutes of runtime on that battery for this high banker. We are riding quite high at the minute. And that just means that I'm gonna to have to put some ballast in this. So I can load this up with some rocks to weight it down, I'm thinking. But for now, I gotta get everything else set up. Battery in, pump, battery box. Get your electrical connections nice and wet. That's a good start. Smart man would do this on shore, but I am um, a product of the public schooling system. So that's not how this works. I got the pump floating in the water. Let's just see if it'll turn on and work. Helps if you actually turn the pump on. Oh yeah. <laughs> now we're cooking. That seems to be well set up. I just got to anchor this. We've got a nice long rope. Um, I don't want it to go any further than about there because my pay dirt's in this area. So let's just anchor it under a rock here. Yeah, nice. Okay, shovel time. 
This looks so stupid. This is a proof of concept, and I think it's important for prospectors to branch out and do this kind of stuff. I would be interested if there is like a dredge manufacturer such as Keen, if they would be interested in making a floating high banker like this. If there's a collaboration here, I'm be all for it. Someone, someone talk to me. All right, relock the box so we don't get that really wet. Just like that. We're gonna put a little bit of ballast in there. I'm thinking we're just gonna use some smaller rocks like these um, so we can distribute the weight properly. That is really unstable. It needs, it needs like pontoons coming off it. All right. We're pumping and we're sluicing. Let's see what happens. I think we need to tip the sluice forward. Whoa, not that much forward. A little bit forward, a little bit forward, a little bit forward. There we go. Let's try. First scoop of pay dirt. Oh, on the pontoon. Oh, it's unstable as. Okay, okay, all right. Possibly slightly too much dirt at once. Slow feeding, Chris. This is what people were talking about. It's when you dump the pay dirt in, when you dump the pay dirt in, it leans the sluice box back. If I could have it set up that way, or nah, it just needs, it needs like some outrunners. If it just had some outrunners so it sat stable, so it was as wide, like if it was square, it'd be perfect. I know there's gold here because we tested it yesterday and Gadzi and I both died of heat exhaustion. It's in, it's in that clay there. That's really good stuff. This is faster than panning for sure. And it's way more convenient because I don't have to walk these shovels up to the bank or anything where you'd normally have to set your high banker up. It seems to be working. And it's even level. Well, I mean, water's self-leveling, leveling, right? Whew. Oh, it's so good to be in waist deep water on a day like today. There's real potential here. We're not allowed to dredge in Australia. Dredging's been illegal since 1991. What's specifically illegal or uh, unlawful is the head. So the proper dredge head units are what they banned. And then they put in a bunch of mechanical ex excavation clauses. High banking is still legal. And this, I feel if you had a full-sized high banker with a proper pontoon setup, that you're able to even put on like a belt system and walk down a creek? Yeah, yeah. Come here. In theory, and I mean processing dirt from there would be cool, but in theory, I should be able to just walk this like a, a sluice box dog to the next spot. Yeah, sluice box, sluice box, sluice box. <laughs> and if I moor it up to a tree like this, listen to me using all the nautical terms, we should be good. I know there's gold around this area too. Oh, now that it's not going anywhere, that's working, that's working pretty good, that. <laughs> oh, I feel like I'm on Bering Sea Gold, except it's Reedy Creek and it's a little pontoon high banker, not a massive ship with an excavator on it. <laughs> we are taking on a little bit of water. Um, the water is becoming a little bit of a problem because every time it rocks back, the water waits up on the other side. So I'm just wondering if I can cheat this, right? Because why would I do anything properly when I can just tip it? This is 
is a bad idea. Now I've got to rearrange all this. <laughs> That's a little better. Whoop. That, that big rock is like right on the limit of what's acceptable, I'm going to guess. I suppose you would like to see if there is actually gold in this spot, because that would be the logical thing to do, yes? So I'm going to take about as much pay dirt out of the ground as what I've been putting down the little sluice box here. Let's see if we see if we get any golds. It's usually all on that clay. It's very nice stuff. Definitely have to break up because it's got gold through it because there's gravel all through it. We're talking anywhere between 50 and 3. So on a good pan you'll get 50, on a bad pan you'll get 3. <laughs> When we tested this spot yesterday, there was very little black sand for Reedy Creek, but the gold, when it was good, was really good. And there we go, we have got golds, so we've got about 10. They are very fine specks, couple of nicer flakes in there, but for the most part it's traditional Reedy gold, that super fine, super flat flower. Because there's not a lot of black sand in here, I'm not expecting a hard cleanup, nor am I expecting to see too much in the matting at the front here, but we are definitely collecting it. And that bodes super well for collecting our gold, because if we can catch the black sand, we're definitely catching gold. Anyway, the gold's not gonna dig itself, is it? We gotta get back to work. I've run about 50 shovels through this. It's taken me a good 45 minutes or so to do that. It's not the most efficient setup because it is a very small high banker. It's rocking back and forth and I can make some improvements. But I think it's done very well for a concept. Right, it is really hot today. Super uncomfortable and I've got to have a play. So I might just leave it there for today and we'll do a clean out. Oh, come on, hockey strap, you can do it. There we go. It is freaking hot today. The top piece of miner's moss here is usually where you'll see most of your gold, but I don't know in this case. Maybe not. Maybe it's a bit different when you've got your sluice box on a boat. This is what we managed to get out of our little floating dredge high banker pontoony thing. I'm thinking we're going to see gold. It's not going to be a bonanza because at the end of the day, I only did 50 shovels. It's not very many. I did, however, get some really decent black sand. Right before I reveal the gold that we got out of the little pontoon high bank car, please go down to the description below and check out the Old Moldy, the website where I'm selling a whole bunch of stuff, including model rock boxes, beard combs, pay dirt, gemstones. All of that money goes directly back into supporting creating videos like this. And over on Patreon this month, we're giving away two one gram guaranteed gold pay dirts for just as little as a dollar a month. You'll win it completely for free if you're one of the lucky people. All right, on with the reveal. Obviously, I'm going to get the close-up camera onto this once I peel it back, but we do have gold, and look at the lead! <laughs> we got one, two, three, four, five, six shotgun pellets, plus a nice air gun pellet there, and a couple of very good little flakes of gold. Ooh, damn! Obviously, that was a very small run, but we still managed to find some nice coarse pieces of gold for Reedy Creek. And look, the fact is, even if we do lose a little bit of gold, when it comes to doing this kind of experimentation, we collected more gold than I started with at the start of the day. And those super fine pieces up in the center of your screen right now are hard to catch on a good day. So I'm gonna say that little sluice box idea is a go. At any rate, I did it. I did a thing.